all right so now we are going to discuss sacred heart uh, periodic test obviously 10 cbsc mathematics so i hope that you will note down the mistakes and you will learn something from the paper all right so without further ado let's begin with the first question as you can see time limit and minimum marks is given um maximum not minimum marks maximum marks is given to you now mind it the paper has been provided so what you can do is you can solve the paper yourself and then look at the video syllabus. all right that way you will get to practice it all right moving on to the first very first question of the test which is which of the following cannot be the probability of an event now i know that the probability of the event will always lie between 0 and 1 right so percentage wise uh, obviously 80 percent that is nothing but 8 by 10 which is again lying between 0 and 1 it can be 15 percent 15 by 100 0 and 1 ki which will lie 100 percent that is exactly equal to 1 probability of some event can be equal to 1 so it's absolutely fine but 1 by 20, 125 percent that means 125 by 100 Clearly, this quantity is greater than 1. So, that is why this cannot be the probability of some event. Alright. So, option D is the correct one. Alright. Moving on to the next question. He says, find the number of zeros of P of X in their joining figure. Now, first of all, he should say, find the number of distinct zeros. Right. Usually, they mean that. So, 1, 1, 2, 3. Mind it, I'm solving it under the under the assumption that it says distinct zeros because in NCRT, if zeros is given, they mean distinct zero. Your school might have a difference of opinion, but I will solve the paper according to the rules and norms of NCRT. Go. All right. Moving on to the next one. He says the value of k for which minus four is the zero of the polynomial. Now, if minus four is the zero of the polynomial, that means if I replace x by minus four, the value of the polynomial becomes equal to zero. So replace x by minus 4. So minus 4 whole square minus minus 4 minus 2 plus 2k is equal to 0. You can easily solve it and it actually turns out to be, k turns out to be 9. Alright, moving on to the next one. He says the pair of equation this and this. Now these two lines are very easy. I can imagine them. Y is equal to 2. Y coordinate is always 2. So line is parallel to itself. Y is equal to minus 3. X coordinate is always minus 3. So obviously this is my x axis. Now you think these two lines will have any solution? No. These are parallel lines. They will never meet. That means no solution. Option D is the correct one. Alright. The fifth one. First of all, there's a tiny correction in option C. This should be. I, I lost. Yeah. First of all, option C, this 11 should be actually equal to 0. Now, let's read the question. He says, which of the following pair of equations represent coincident lines? Now, coincident lines happens when A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2 is equal to C1 by C2. Right? Let me talk about option A. A1 by A2, so that is 3 by 7. Then B1 by B2, 1 by 7 divided by 3. Clearly, 3 by 7 is not equal to this one. So, I am not going to check for B. So, 1 by, I will multiply it obviously. So, 1 by 4, 3 by 12, which is same as 1 by 4, okay. Then 11 by 22, which is 1 by 2. Clearly, these are not equal. Again, I do not want option B. Option C, 2 by 4, cool. 3 by 6, cool. 9 by 18. Cool. So, this is 1 by 2. This is 1 by 2. This is 1 by 2. So, A1 by A2 is equal to B1 by B2. That means these will represent the coincident lines. Alright. Moving on. Now, he says find the zeros of this polynomial. First of all, write the polynomial in the better fashion. 6x square minus 7x minus 3. I can easily factor, uh, split the middle term. So, 6x square minus 9x plus 2x minus 3. I can take 3x common, 2x minus 3, okay, plus 1 common, 2x minus 3. So, basically my zeros are 3 by 2 and minus 1 by 3. Verify the relationship between zeros and coefficients. Now, sum of zeros you can find out. Sum of is equal to 3 by 2 plus minus 1 by 3. Take 6 calcium, so this is 3 into 3, 9 minus 2, so that is 7 by 6. Right, now you write minus coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square 
which is equal to minus now coefficient of x is minus 7 7 divided by coefficient of x square which is 6 it's actually nothing but 7 by 6 obviously sum of zeros is equal to negative of coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square hence the relation is verified you will do the same thing for the product of zeros then you will verify the both the relation all right moving on question number three now okay forward value of a the system of linear equations is an inconsistent pair of equations. Inconsistent. That means if there should be no solution. So that means condition for no solution is a1 by a2 equal to b1 by b2 not equal to c1 by c2. So 2 by a minus 1 should be equal to 3 by a plus 1 should not be equal to 7 by 3a plus 1. Right? Okay. So... Let me use this because I like quality better than uh, non-equality. So, cross multiply. So, 2 into a plus 1 is equal to 3 into a minus 1. So, I'll get 3a, 2a. So, right hand side a. Then 2a minus 3 side by. So, that means 5. So, a is equal to 5. So, let me che uh, check whether a is equal to 5. Satisfy the equation. Uh, this thing or not. So, this becomes 2 divided by 5 minus 1. That is 4. This is 3 divided by. 5 plus 1, that is 6. Obviously, these two are equal. Now, let me check this. 7 divided by 3 into 5, 15 plus 1, that is 16, which is not equal to this. That means A is equal to 5 is the solution. All right, moving on. Now, he says, given linear equation this, right? Another linear equation in two variables such that the geometrical representation of the pair is intersecting lines. Intersecting lines. That means he is talking about the unique solution case. Now, unique solution happens when a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2. So, here 2 is there. So, I can have 2x plus 3 by minus 6 is done. Now, I can have x plus and I can have 2y minus 7 equal to 0. I have made sure that 2 by 1 is not equal to 3 by 2. In this case, this would be a unique solution. This is the answer. Now, he says parallel lines. Parallel lines, that means no solution case. So, a1 by a2 equal to b1 by b2 is not equal to c1 by c2. So, my line is 2x plus 3 by minus 6 equal to. So, I can double it up 4x plus 6 by. Right, because 2 by 4 is obviously equal to 3 by 6. Now, it should not be equal to, I will say, minus 7 equal to. So, minus 6 divided by minus. Clearly, this is the case for parallel lines and this is the answer for the second. Obviously, there can be multiple answers. Depends on you what kind of examples you take. Alright. Now, he says, find the quadratic polynomial whose zeros are given. Now, if 2 is the 0, my factor is x minus 2. Minus 5 is the 0, my factor is x plus 5. Multiply it x squared plus 3x minus 10, which is the quadratic polynomial. Alright. Moving on. One card is drawn from a bell shuffle deck of 52 cards. Find the probability of getting a king of red color. First of all, I need to write total number of outcomes. So, 52 cards are there. In how many different ways can I pick one card out of these 52? I can have spade, a one of spade. I can have one of diamond. I can have two or hearts. So, basically, I have 52 options. So, 52 different possible outcomes are there, which are the total number of outcomes. Now, he says probability. So, favorable outcome. A king of red color. Now, either it will be a heart king or a diamond. Right, so just two outcomes, two favorable outcomes, so 2 by 52. Or you can say 1 by 20. Alright, find the probability of getting a spade. Again, total number of outcomes remains the same, 52. Spade, there are 13 cards in the spade suit, so 13. So answer is 1 by 4. Alright, moving on to the next one. He says two dice are thrown, find the probability of getting a double. Okay, now two uh, dice are thrown. That means my uh, outcomes will look like 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, so 1, 1, 6. Then 2, 1, 2, 2, so 1, 6. And, 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 and. Last one would be 6. 6, 1, 6, 2, and last would be 6. So basically, 36 outcomes are there. Now, favorable is getting a double. That means I can get 1, 1 or 2, 2, or 3, 3, or 4, 4, or 5, 5, or 6. The 6 favorable outcomes. So that means 6 by 36 answer is 1 by 6. Alright, next one. He says find all the zeros of the polynomial 
if two of its zeros are flipped. Now, if one zero is root two, the other zero is minus root two. So my factors are x minus root two into x plus root, which is actually equal to x square minus. Right now, if I divide x square, now if I divide x to the power four minus um, plus three x cube minus twenty x square minus six x plus thirty six. Right, I can write the um question. A question right so uh, the question would be i'm writing it directly i'm hoping you know how to divide the two columns you know you do have done that in class night i think so x square here right uh x square is here so uh, hmm. okay i i will do the calculation for you then plus dx Minus semi split and so on. So x is of four is there, three x cube is there, minus six square. That's okay. No one, let's just divide it. Let's see what happens. So here I have x square, x raised for 4. Then uh, I will have minus 2x square. So 2 here. So minus plus. I will get 3x square minus 18x. Now I will have 3x. Just doing it right only. Okay, cool. So uh, 3x cube. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. 3x cube minus okay here i will write minus six minus six is from above this gets cancelled this gets cancelled so done done my nine minus 18 so it's right it should be minus 18 cool so my question becomes this one and i can easily factorize it this is nothing but x plus six into x minus three right so i have factorized this polynomial as x minus root two into x plus root two obviously into x plus six into x minus three from here root 2 minus root 2 which i already knew and minus 6 and 3 they are the all the zeros of the polynomial all right sorry for doubting myself all right cool now he says find two numbers whose sum is 28 two numbers whose sum is 28 so suppose my numbers are a and b sum is equal to 20. seven times their difference so seven times their difference suppose a is greater than k seven times their difference is equal to four times their Mind it here, I am doing the question when a is equal to, is greater than b. Right? So let me just simplify this. So 7a, 4a. Shift it to one side. So 3a is equal to 4b plus 7b, 11. Right? You can substitute it actually. Right? a is equal to 11b by 3. Substitute it. So 11b by 3 plus b is equal to 20. So this is nothing but 14b is equal to 28 into 3. So this is 2. So b is equal to 6. Now, if b is equal to 6, put it here. So, a is equal to 22. Right? So, find two numbers. So, my numbers are 21, 6. Alright. Moving on to the next one now. He says, solve the following pair of linear equations. Solve. First of all, um, <laughs> fractions, not a big fan. So, multiply by 6. So, I will get 3x plus 4y equal to minus 6. Right? Uh, the second multiply by 3, so 3x minus y equal to 9. Subtract it. So this is 5y equal to minus 15. So y is equal to minus 3. Okay, substitute it here maybe. So 3x minus minus 3, so plus 3 equal to 9. 3x equal to 6. x equal to 2. So solve the equation. So x equal to 2 and y is equal to minus 3. It's the solution of the equation. All right, moving on to the very last question. Now he says the entry P is rupees 5. The game consists of tossing a coin three times. If one or two heads show, one or two heads show, Shweta gets her entry P back. That means she gets rupees 5 back. If she throws three heads, she receives double the entry P. That means she gets rupees 10 back. 
otherwise she will lose so either she have to get one head or two head in both the cases she will get rupees five if she gets three heads she'll get rupees ten right otherwise if she gets zero head basically which is the only case she will lose now he says for tossing a coin three times find the probability that she loses the entry she loses the entry now um obviously in this case she wins it first of all i need to write all the okay fine let me write so first case uh i can have three heads then i can have first head second head tail then head tail head then tail head head then head tail tail then tail head tail 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 head and then tail 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 let me check have i missed something no these are in total eight outcomes now he says loses the entry fee that means uh one head is not coming two head has also not come right three head loses the entry fee. for three head she gets so she technically gets more than the entry fee so she is not losing anything she is not losing it because she gets some money back so three head is also not there right so that means just a zero head case now zero head case head is here head 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 oh this is one case then the head is not there so one by eight this is how i interpret it somebody your teacher might have a different opinion but it is not stated clearly in the question so that is why uh, i'm writing the answer as one by eight right gets double the entry fee now obviously that is in just one case when three head is there so that is one by all right so with this we are done thank you and i will see